With the release of Deadpool and Wolverine now in theaters, it's time to dive in and do a ton of rankings and kick it off this celebration of the mutants is our X-Men ranking. This includes all of the older X-Men movies and, of course, the brand new Deadpool and Wolverine. Definitely leave your thoughts down below in the comment section because it's always curious to see your ranking. And, of course, make sure to go check out the full review for Deadpool and Wolverine as well over on the channel. But without further ado, let's get into this ranking ranking. And coming down at my number 15 is Once Upon a Deadpool, which maybe some of you might not include this in your list. Some of you may include this on your list. I decided to because I just didn't want to get shit on from the internet, but I put this in last place mostly for the fact that no, it's not as bad as some of the X-Men movies on here, but I don't give a shit to ever rewatch this movie. Why? Because I have Deadpool 2 to just go and watch. This is a downgraded PG-13 version that doesn't do enough new things to warrant its existence. Yes, some of the new bits are are fun for what they are specifically in the Christmas theme and of course Princess Bride theme but other than that I've never cared to go back and rewatch this I started to rewatch this on my whole rewatch venture and I didn't care to finish it it's just one of those movies that again you're gonna watch Deadpool 2 you're just gonna watch Deadpool 2 you're not gonna watch the once upon a Deadpool movie this was made to make some extra cash at the box office and that's about it there's nothing really much more to it I don't think this is all too great. And again, it's okay. Really kicking off this list now at my number 14 is New Mutants. This is a movie that I want to love. Every single time I go to watch this movie, I want to love it. I want to fall in love with it. And every time I watch it, I just find myself disappointed more and more at all of the fantastic possibilities of what this film could have delivered. And I just sit there going, what went wrong? Because this movie, in execution, there's a lot of great aspects to it i love the mutants that they picked for here i love the entire tone of the movie itself but sadly it's a fucking mess and it's very boring i think that's actually like one of the biggest parts about new mutants for me is how boring this movie is and i think when i look back at it and when i try to go back and rewatch it i never can get through it without like dozing off a bit and that's just a sad part to say because, again, I like the characters in here. I like magic. I think she is a cool character, and maybe a part of that is because of Anya Taylor-Joy. I don't like particularly how they wrote the character, but I like her abilities. I like Maisie Williams. I like Charlie Heaton. The list goes on and on from there. I think some of their powers are cool. I like the whole aspect of how this place seems haunted, and in some way, shape, and form, it's kind of a horror movie here. But in the end of the day, those are just flashes of greatness. And this is where really much this entire X-Men franchise at 20th Century Fox really went down with a whimper. It all very much ended here with New Mutants. It wasn't starting anything new. It really just came, it went, and it went away without many people seeing it and without anyone really remembering it. We get into my number 13, which honestly, going back on rewatch, I didn't find this film as bad as I remembered but it's still not great, and it gets worse as it goes on, and that is the X-Men Origins Wolverine. The one I really wanted to like this time and come around and say, I have the different opinion, and I think there is flashes here that actually, like, when you do look at the entire Wolverine trilogy of some sorts, where you look at Origins, the Wolverine, and then Logan, there is essences of a great character arc, and specifically as you see Hugh Jackman grow as this character throughout all the X-Men movies, and this film, particularly while it does have a very messy script, it's unforgivable what they did to Deadpool. It's unforgivable what they do to a lot of different things at the end of this movie. There is potential here. And again, I could see where they were going for through. This is one of the films that was really much attacked by the writer's strike back in the day. And I think for me, like if I were to grade this out of five stars, I, I would give it like a two and a half because like one star easily goes to Leif Schreiber and Hugh Jackman for trying their best with the material here. Like I, I truly say this, it really Leif Schreiber is so 
freaking awesome, and I wish we would have gotten him more as a Sabretooth. Same thing goes, Hugh Jackman's always great in the role. I really like the early montage of them as brothers, and specifically the earlier parts of this movie. And even then, one and a half stars I'd also give, because I think it also has some cool action scenes. Like, there's no denying that the action in here is actually shot, like, particularly decently. Even if it gets overly CGI'd heavy, and for people who don't remember, the video game for this movie was actually 10 times better than this movie. If you've never played it, you absolutely should. It was M-rated. Give it like a negative two stars for literally everything with Deadpool and everything else with the story. It is messy, it's incoherent, there's tons of continuity errors when it comes down to the entire X-Men franchise, but specifically starting with this one. And overall, it's not one I care to ever rewatch. Now coming up next is X-Men 3 The Last Stand. Now this, every time I come back, Again, you rewatch this one. You come off that hype of the trilogy. You're like, the first two were awesome, so this one's got... Oh, it's not great. It's not great. Uh, again, messy as hell. And for me, again, this kind of comes down to the same thing that I have with the last film that I just talked about, where there is, for every awesome idea you have in this movie, you look at it and you're like, this is great! It's executed in the most mediocre way possible. All those great ideas that stemmed from the first two in terms of what it's saying about our world and specifically this, this world with mutants, it's so powerful and it's just completely taken away. It's rushed for so many other possibilities and becomes the most generic action film possible with some solid action at least in that and some good performances Hugh Jackman again always great I love Patrick Stewart in here Ian McKellen is excellent and I think again a lot of the third act is entertaining but it falls apart I also like I had like a Mandela effect watching this and I don't know if it was just me there's two things that like came to my mind first off what we only had Beast in this one I swore Beast was in the first two, but like completely forgot he wasn't in there when I was doing my rewatches. Then I get to the third one, I'm like, oh my God, Beast was not in the last two. And going back to this, it still baffles me how they handled Cyclops. Like you kill him off right in the beginning? What the fuck? What? What are we doing? Someone who I don't think gets enough credit in here is Famke, who plays Jean Grey. I think she's actually really good. Again, trying to go above and beyond the material given to her, but this was a little bit stronger than I was anticipating. And at least for the most part, it's entertaining, but it's not memorable. And again, for everything that the first two X-Men films had in this trilogy, this one lacks completely. Getting into my number 11 is what some people will say is actually the end of the X-Men franchise at 20th Century Fox, and that is Dark Phoenix. Now, a lot of us weren't really anticipating this. It kind of felt like the last whimper, especially after Apocalypse. And for me, Dark Phoenix, as I went to watch it, I didn't mind it. There's redeeming qualities to it but it's also really boring at the same time but when i have to look at all these movies put together this one for me had a couple different things that kind of stuck out to me and one of those is han zimmer's score that just goes completely hard for no apparent reason but han zimmer is the goat and we all have to appreciate him i thought the action in here was damn good like some of the best and probably the first class trilogy and maybe even the x-men franchise as a whole i thought a lot of it specifically everything was Magneto on the train was great but that's where we get to the story and the story is messy it's crazy to me that they messed up the Dark Phoenix saga twice twice guys they messed it up twice and it still baffles me to this day that they messed it up both times and both times it was very much lackluster I guess they focused on it a little bit more in this one than the last stand but Still, the mixed bag, and honestly, Last Stand in this could go hand in hand as switching in and out of its placement. I really much didn't know where, where to really put the Dark Phoenix saga or this Dark Phoenix movie. Again, after rewatching everything, I enjoyed this one just a tad bit more, but it is completely forgettable, as I had just watched it two days ago, and I still can't remember to tell you anything really at all. Wish I could. But again, those two things stuck out the most and rivaled it above Last Stand for me, at least. Now brings me up to my number 10, and that is X-Men Apocalypse. Now, I've had like a hit or miss thing with this film, and I remember when I first saw it, I felt disappointed. I was just like, what is this? Days of Future Past was so great, and now we have this. And Apocalypse is like one of the coolest villains in the comics. How do you mess that up? And even rewatching it all this time again, it's still just messy it's overly long there's trying to do so much in this movie 
And I don't get why. And I think a lot of it stems to that they're trying to resolve all these different storylines that they had at the end of Days of Future Past. And again, they have Apocalypse 2. And it just feels like we're skipping stuff that we don't need to. Or even, again, introducing things that we really don't have to have in here. We're trying to evolve and bring in more X-Men, such as Cyclops, such as Dream Grey, such as Storm. But again, we also have to f focus on the rest of the First Class crew and how they're evolving and how that's going. Oh, and then we have Apocalypse, who's going to bring in more mutants. And he's trying to take over the world and do all this stuff. It's, again, a little bit better than I remembered it being. But it's still so messy and so slow. It's pacing meanders so much. And when I was rewatching this, I would stop it and look and be like, oh my God, I still have an hour left. Keep playing. Oh my God, I still have 30 minutes left. And it just kept feeling like that. I think a lot of this is just very much dragged out. And I don't know. I feel like a couple more script rewrites were honestly needed on this one. But what I will end this in the positivity of saying is that everything with Magneto here I thought was perfect and phenomenal. I think it again goes to everything that I love Michael Fassbender's performance as this character. And same thing goes for James McAvoy, who I think is incredible as Xavier. But truly enough, I do want to give a shout out. I know people kind of shit on Jennifer Lawrence, but... I think her performance here is solid, maybe not the strongest out of the her time as Mystique, but I actually really liked what they did with the character Mystique coming off of Days of Future Past into this one, and I thought it was one of the more smart things they do. Also, the new crew, like Jean Grey and Cyclops, I did like them. I just wish they would have given them, again, a little bit more stuff to actually have in this film. Now we get into my number nine, and this is a bigger jump over Apocalypse. Like, I would say a pretty massive jump in terms of, like, my entertainment, and that is Dead. Deadpool 2. Deadpool 2 is a movie that I've, again, also had that shakeup with, where originally when I watched it, I, I loved it. I had some things that I felt iffy on, and those iffy things only hit me harder and harder and harder every single time I rewatched this movie, to the point where I just didn't rewatch it up until this point. It had probably been four years since I had seen the movie, and it came off a little bit better than I remembered. I still cannot get over everything they did with Vanessa in this, though. I, I do not think killing off Vanessa was the smartest thing to do, and if you were going to kill her off, you should have left her dead, because when the film ended and they did the end credit scene, which the end credit scene, do not get me wrong, is absolutely hilarious and it's so much fun but bringing back Vanessa really struck a core with me that did not hit the mark totally and because then for me it negated a lot of what Wade Wilson went in throughout this story and if you were going to take that big ballsy jump you should have just left it as it was now I'm happy she's alive don't get me wrong, because the first Deadpool is special to me for a reason. I love Vanessa in there. I think she's one of the best parts. But Deadpool 2 kind of irked me in that wrong way. And again, that was the one thing I came out of the first time I watched it, Iffy. And it just kept peeking away every single time I thought about it or rewatched it. But... I still do think that the themes in here of Wade's life are some of the stronger aspects of this movie. That theme of finding your family and who your actually family is, is where the heart of this entire story really goes. Maybe even some more smart ones than even the first film, but I think it is just such a great thing. And it's again, Deadpool taking the superhero genre and flipping it over. And a lot of that is towards the jokes against the Avengers, making his own X-Force and that going horribly wrong. Also, the action sequences in here are also great. The entire like subway, like kind of like bus piling through the city with Cable, Domino and Deadpool and all that stuff going along is great. And speaking of Cable, Josh Brolin is phenomenal as him. Same thing with Zazie Beats. I actually think she steals the entire show as Domino. A little bit disappointed she did not come back for Deadpool 3, but again, she is so damn good in that role. Overall, I'm on the camp that I think this movie's enjoyable. It's entertaining. Would I rewatch it all the time? No, probably not. But it's one that like I would say, yeah, I like it overall. Just not even close to the first one's greatness. Then we get into my number eight, which is the original X-Men movie, which on its surface, there is again, nothing really wrong with this movie. It is so simple and that's okay. It was the kickoff of not just the X-Men franchise at the time, 
but superhero movies in the early 2000s to really kick back off and bring superhero films back to life. For me, that is actually one of the most important things about this movie is the fact of what it did for its legacy of comic book movies. And I'm so happy that we do have this X-Men movie because going back, it felt like a, I was time traveling to that era and getting to enjoy it, seeing all the characters come to life, seeing Wolverine, seeing Sabretooth, seeing, again, Cyclops and Jean Grey his first interactions with Wolverine and how Professor X really believes in Wolverine and all these different instances of seeing how Hugh Jackman's character like started in one place and now getting to go and look through it all and also at the same time seeing how they integrated Rogue into this. I think Rogue kind of gets backhandled in the last few movies of this franchise but again she's such a major part and I like how we have two outsiders coming into this mansion one who's kind of like against the grain of it which is Wolverine and one that's like so thankful for this entire process because of everything she's going through and again that simplicity of this movie is why it works it's not big it's not the biggest grandest stakes ever but it is entertaining and it established the x-men in a great way not having to give everyone's backstory right off the bat but enough to intrigue you to go I want to keep watching this I want to get to know the x-men more we get into my number seven and this is x2 I loved this movie like this film and up these are all I love categories and X2 for me I think will be a little bit higher for some others on this list I, I think this movie is just fantastic it takes exactly what the first X-Men film did but doubles down on it and goes past that simplistic tone but actually grows with its mature themes and as well as giving phenomenal performances overall plus when you add nightcrawler into your movie yeah i'm instantly gonna be even more hyped he was always one of my favorite x-men in the animated series and specifically the way that they use him in here was again just great but seeing how every single one of these elements just piles on top of the last again it's bigger it's bolder it's more badass the stakes are higher and i love again how we're coming back to this conclusion these mature themes of having two different sides of music mutants one side that kind of does not believe in all this and other and another side that again wants to try and work with the humans i love how that all goes and again i love how the ending happens with professor x and the president and all of that stuff the performances are fantastic and again this is just everything you would expect this film to be and more it makes you even more disappointed when you go and watch the last stand because of how phenomenal x2 is now at my number six this one is going to be a controversial take and i understand that I don't know what it is, but I love this movie and I've never understood the hate. I know it gets a little silly, but my number six is the Wolverine. There is something special about this that really harkens back to the days of where I would read Wolverine comic books. And it really hones in that Western vibe, but at the same time, that heritage of Japan. I think all those little instances really just come together for a nostalgic feeling but also one that feels so core, seeing where Wolverine went after the events of The Last Stand. And I think as being an epilogue to his character after that, I think this is a grand way to celebrate that and keep it going forward, but as well to see him as this role once again. This is the most shredded he was, and I think if this movie was R-rated, it probably would have even been a little bit better because of the violence, but the action is great. Yes, again, it gets silly with the Silver Samurai stuff and some of the mutant stuff in the third act, but I'm okay with that because that's kind of how some of the comics would get it. It would be serious and then build up all the way to that point and it didn't need to be a giant robot but i'm i'm like over it like it, it's been how many years since this film premiered but watching the wolverine now i just have this greater appreciation for the movie in every single way and specifically how solo superhero films should be developed and i think james mangold did such a phenomenal job with this film this is one of those movies that again, just definitively gives all of the greatness of what I wanted from a Wolverine movie and specifically something that I had seen from the comics and then getting to see him in modern day Japan just, again, gives you such great feelings. Plus, Hugh Jackman, again, as I mentioned, great performances all across the ground. I love that Famke shows up in here in like little flashbacks and of course, this is like ghost that's haunting him and everyone else across the board is just great. We've made it to the top five and at my number five, it is X-Men First Class. For a long time, I thought this was the best x-men movie when i'm just talking about the team films in its center this is actually one of the few x-men movies i've never actually seen in theaters because i didn't care for the x-men franchise anymore when this had come out 
And then I got to check it out when I rented it and watched it at home and I'm like, wow, that gives me the same feeling that the original X-Men feeling probably gave my dad and also gave me when I was younger, but definitely my dad. And it reinvented and brought these characters back in a newer light that made me go, I love this. I'm very excited for this. And it excites me to see how these characters can grow and move forward in that. But I like that we're going back. I like that we're bringing back the past. And again, the continuity errors, we already know. They're, they're all throughout this franchise. You do have to kind of put that in the back of your frame of mind, certain things that they do with Magneto, certain things that they do with Xavier, certain things that they do with Mystique. But every single one of these things just all add up. And with a phenomenal direction from Matthew Vaughn, you know that first class, you're going to get that excellent storytelling, but also some great action scenes. And this entire film, the way that it is built up, alongside a significant part of our history and how mutants were there. And I like how they tackle that and place it in there, but also that they're not afraid to dive into that friendship of Magneto and Xavier. They, it could have been very easy to just do a Magneto origin story and it would have been devastating and it would have been hard to watch. And we do get some of that in here, but to see two counter opposites come together to be friends. And then by the end, they split up because of everything that had happened. And in the end of the day, they both believe in the same thing, but both believe how they can get to that same thing is in a different purpose and a different way of life. And I like in the counter opposite how you have Mystique and some of the other X-Men who maybe have to choose their sides and decide which way they would go because in reality is what someone might be granting on this side is not something that you believe might happen. Since we are in celebration of Deadpool and Wolverine, one of the greatest cameos ever, Hugh Jackman, them walking in and him saying, Xavier, go fuck yourself. Now we get to the grand one of it all, number four, and that is Deadpool and Wolverine. Now I am fully anticipating some people to put this up a little bit higher on their list. I need to see this movie again. I need to see it again. I need to rewatch it again because I didn't think it was perfect. I almost thought it I almost thought it was perfect. There was a couple nitpicks I had here and there, but I did have a damn good time with this movie and I loved it. I loved my experience and everything that I wanted to see in this movie was basically there. And even a little bit more. I was surprised what they did with the Vanessa stuff. I was surprised how they handled the Logan's legacy stuff. I liked that they joked around with it. I liked that the meta fourth wall breaking was probably some of the most funny and hilarious satire currently right now and how it worked towards the MCU, towards our culture, towards the woke culture, towards everything of that nature. Like this film attacked it all in such a humorous and hilarious way. And I loved it. I loved it for all those meanings, but I also love that in the end of the day, this is a very heartfelt love letter, the entire Fox superhero realm. And that is one of the things that I was not anticipating is getting that heartfelt love letter. I also wasn't anticipating getting a story about finding your worth in the world. That's through Deadpool. That's through Wolverine. That's through a lot of the different characters and specifically what they're trying to find here. And I like that the themes of this is that finding your worth in the world. And I've always said that like for me, Deadpool is like one of the most relatable characters to me because on the outside, he is one of the most annoying people out there. And that's kind of how I feel. Some people think I'm annoying, but the inside of Wade, he just wants the best. He wants to be the best for everyone around him. And that's kind of how I feel too. And when you're looking at the first Deadpool movie, where it's him finding his stone, his rock, his solid place, his loved one, and him wanting to be best for them, but learning that even if he is hideous, even if he is ugly, it all counts for what's inside. Deadpool 2 really came about in finding your family. You don't have to be alone in this world. And when you find your family, well... The last thing that you probably should, and some people do this the opposite if you're going to therapy and stuff, is finding yourself. And Deadpool and Wolverine was finding your self-worth, which we got a Wolverine that needed to find that, and we have a Deadpool that also needed to find that. And again, I think it is one of the most heartfelt things that they could have done. I think Sean Levy imbued a lot of that heart into the story, and we've seen that through Stranger Things, through Real Steel, through a lot of his films. I didn't love how he shot all the action. I think some of the action could have been better. I think some of the Spotify needle drops are, were a little bit too much personally for me, but the more and more I think about the movie, those nitpicks can like get fucked off and moved away 
because Deadpool and Wolverine delivered exactly what I wanted and more. I wanted a fun road trip movie with two of my favorite comic book characters of all time and two of my favorite comic book castings of all time. And I got that. And then I got an emotional deeper layer that I wasn't anticipating whatsoever. So for me, Deadpool and Wolverine executes about all that. And then even on top of that, I know a lot of people are excited for the cameos and surprises, and I'm not going to spoil them here. I have a spoiler review on my channel, either up now or will be going up soon. And that those spoilers, those surprises, all were meaningful for the most part. Like, they were written into the story pretty well. And, like, one was just damn right hilarious, but, like, some of the others were written in in a way that felt, again, meaningful for what needed to happen. And I really loved that charm and that wit that they placed into there. This film is hilarious. This film is a laugh riot. It is heartwarming. It made me smile. And I just keep thinking about certain moments through it and trying not to laugh to myself. And I just can't wait to see it again. Out of my number three, after we get out of that pity party I just gave, uh, my number three is X-Men Days of Future Past, which if you've watched my rankings for a while or listened to me talk on podcasts, this is one I have not revisited, honestly, since it had come out in theaters. I think I'd seen it like maybe once or twice when it came at home, but it was all within the same year. And this was one that, the first time I watched it, a little disappointed. A little disappointed in why I, I can't remember or tell you why. Um... But this time, it finally struck me that this film is just masterful. And it might be because we've just been embodied with so many comic book movies over the, like the last, what, decade? And this movie hits the nail running in terms of its, again, love letter to the original cast of the X-Men and the new first class cast, and then embodying this all centered around Hugh Jackman's Wolverine, which is awesome. I love his performance in here. It seems like every time he's gotten to play Wolverine, he gives like a different angle to the character that I wasn't expecting. And Days of Future Past just nails that. It nails all of that. And again, if you ask me why I didn't like this movie prior, like why I just thought it was a little overrated, I, I literally could not tell you. It felt like I was watching a night and day film here. The stakes felt larger. All the Sentinel stuff is horrifying and scary. And I can't imagine being the mutants in this and how you cannot even, you can't stop them. They're unstoppable. But I like all the mumbo jumbo. I think a lot of it actually works of how they send Wolverine back and how the whole past goes and how it's going back and forth. And I love apocalyptic stuff. And I think Days of Future Past only grows more as the years it goes on. And it is, again, one of those movies that I think in execution is the strongest and one of the strongest team up comic book movies of all time. Its story is powerful. Its characters are well written. I love seeing where like Professor Xavier is and how Hugh Jackman's Wolverine is now the one that has to bring him into the limelight. Beast is great. Mystique is great. Magneto's great. The entire third act is great. I love Love, love Days of Future Past now, and I'm so happy that I can say that. Now we get into my number two, which is the most rewatched movie I've ever seen in theaters. Um, my most rewatched movie of all time is Toy Story, but like coming up next would probably be Deadpool. Deadpool was everything for me. As I And as I just mentioned, I relate so much to this character. I loved him from the comics. I never thought we would get Ryan Reynolds in this movie. The test footage looked great, and then we actually get this film. And from the trailers to everything, this movie was everything that I wanted to see and more. It was one that made me laugh. It made me one that made me feel things. But it flipped the comic book genre on its ass, spanked it real hard, and said, I'm changing this shit. And that's exactly what Deadpool did. He breaks the fourth wall, and he attacks everything. The X-Men universe, the superhero universe at the time. And I think re-watching this, I can see some of its faults. I can see how some of it may not hold up to today's standards. And that's okay. But for me, it's a bundle of joy that sticks with me going forward. And it is one that I just found is perfect. And I love because I'm a sucker for romantic comedies. And in this film, while it's disguised as a parody and a making fun of superhero movies, at the heart of it, it is a romantic comedy. And I think Wade and Vanessa's relationship is the key piece in here that actually holds this above everything else in this franchise because of how much they make you care about it, how much they make you care about Wade and understand him, 
and along his journey of trying to save his girl and get back to her. I love that. The character is just absolutely vulgar and hilarious. The action scenes are great. Tim Miller does a great job directing those. And Deadpool itself was everything I wanted it to be and more. And I love, love, love that so much. And I'm so happy that we have this movie. But my number one, it's no surprise. It's Logan. I've said it before in so many reviews and so many podcasts and so many rankings that Logan is like top three best comic book movies of all time. There's no denying that. And the legacy of what Hugh Jackman left on the field with Logan felt like he never needed to come back to this character. And obviously he has now. And that was one of my biggest worries. And I love how they handled it in Deadpool and Wolverine. But Logan is just incredible. You get emotional. It's dark. It's very violent. And it's beautiful. But it's also a movie that I completely and utterly love in every single light. I love the take on the old man Logan style here because that's one of my most favorite comics of all time. But I like how different it is. I like how much more serious it is. I like the world that we're in. I love the usage of X-23 and how they bring her into this. Hugh Jackman's performance should have been nominated for an Oscar. And speaking of an Oscar, Patrick Stewart should have fucking won for this movie. The film should have been nominated in every degree. I know it got nominated for script, which thank God it deserved. But the film is touching. And it only gets better and better as you rewatch it and on and on and on. When I watch this movie, I fall more in love with something in this. I get more emotional every single time I watch it. There's just something special that gets craved throughout this movie. And it's something that really sticks the landing overall. Logan is one of the best comic book movies ever made. It is the best X-Men movie by a landslide. Again, some people might be like, well, it's not a, technically not an X-Men movie because it's Logan. And I don't care. It's my number one. I love this movie. I think it's perfect. And I'm assuming you do too. I know very few people that do not like this movie, but... With that said, that is my X-Men ranking. Thank you so much again, guys, for watching this. Make sure to hit that like, subscribe button, comment down below your guys' thoughts, and of course, until next time, stay classy.